This video is sponsored by Deckshell, a manufacturer of a wide range of waterproof gloves, socks, hats, and other accessories to keep you warm and dry when you're mountain biking at this time of year. Check out their full range at their website, link down below. This is a brand new Kotic Jet, and with the help of my trail dog, Ali here, we're gonna review the bike today. So you see how it rides and performs, go through the equipment and frame details on this brand new bike and give my verdict at the end of the video. So, Ali, are you ready? Should we go for a ride? Go on then, go. go on. <laughs> The Jet really lives up to its name. It's an impressively quick trail bike that gets up to speed really well thanks to the big wheels and holds onto the speed through technical trails very nicely. It shines in most situations, from mellow trails to chunky feature laden tracks that have your eyelids pinned right back. The Jet just barrels along with all the speed and capability you could ask for from a short travel trail bike. This bike isn't the lightest in the world, but it climbs surprisingly well. Got a nice anti-squat in the suspension, compression lockout lever and a shock as well. The geometry gives you a nice position, that steep seat angle. So you make good progress. You might not be the first to the top of climb, but you won't be last. And for me, what's really important is how the bike feels. And it doesn't feel sluggish like some heavy bikes can. So in this way, the Cossack Jet seems to hide the weight uh, pretty well on long climbs, really. So you make good progress. Doesn't feel like you've been held back unduly. So it's all good. But it's really the way the bike feels when going back down that really matters and where the bike really shines. As I'll try and demonstrate now, although the trails, as you can see from the bike, very, very muddy. So it won't be a high speed run. So do forgive me that, but these are the uh, conditions I have to deal with at this time of year. Descending is where the jet really comes alive. With gravity on your side and the brilliant long shot geometry and pliable suspension, the Cossack car turns with precision and boosts out of turns with maximum speed. On steeper trails, the advantage of the length and slackness looms sharply into focus. It's poised, rock solid stable, and lets you smash through turns as fast as any other trail bike. The suspension is sorted on this bike. It's sensitive to small bumps to help the rear tire scramble over roots and rocks with lots of traction yet ample progression in the case of the big hits, drops and jumps. It climbs well enough that I rarely reach the shock's climbing lever. The steel frame does seem to give a bit more feathery softness to the way the jet handles impacts and tough corners and works hand in hand with the excellent suspension to deliver an appealing ride quality that's less hard edge than other frame materials. So it's luxuriously smooth and it's fast and easily lives up to its name. But the real test, can it keep up with my trail dog? Well. As you can see from the video, no chance, but that's not really the bike's fault now, is it? Ali, you enjoying your mountain biking? Okay, let me just catch my breath, uh, give her some water, and I'll talk you through some of the details on the frame a bit more. The new Jet rolls on 29 inch wheels and packs 140 millimeters of rear wheel travel using the company's own drop link suspension design, while a 150mm fork slots into the oversized head tube. Naturally, like all Cotic bikes, the heart of the frame is a beautifully made Reynolds 853 double butted steel mainframe, with an overlies top tube for maximum stiffness. The rear triangle, meanwhile, is made from aluminium, as are the rocket linkages, and has beefed up oversized suspension pivots. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but it's got a good stance to my eyes and a lot of neat details. External cable routing, a threaded bottom bracket, massive tire clearance, a low slung top tube accommodating longer drop posts, and less space for a bottle cage, just. The new bike slots in between the company's existing models, the shorter travel Flare Max and the burlier Rocket Max. Cossack calls the new bike a quiver killer, as in one bike that can do everything really well. But they have, in my opinion, inadvertently threatened the appeal of the existing bikes because the new jet strikes such a good balance between the nimbleness of the Flare Max and the capability of the bigger Rocket Max, at least judged through the lens of typical UK riding at this time of year. Now, here are five things I really like about a new Kotic jet. I love the steel frame, 
I think the material works really well in this application and Kotick have a long relationship with the material and proved once again that this material works for a full suspension mountain bike and you don't need carbon fiber or aluminum. And it looks fantastic as well. Nice slender tube profiles, an understated classy look in a world of hydroformed and carbon molded bikes. Suspension performance on this bike is excellent. It really is a very good, both due to the drop link suspension configuration and the Cane Creek double barrel shock we got on this bike. It's a nice balance between being linear, so lots of traction on rooty climbs and nice and progressive for big impact absorption as well. And this shock gives you lots of adjustment for high and low speed compression and high and low speed rebound. But I found the factory setting worked really well. All right, sit down, sit, 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 sit. Okay, so being a British design bike, there's lots of sensible details that makes it work really well in our unique climate. So we have full external cable routing, so it's easy to build and easy to maintain. We also have an external threaded bottom bracket, which again, is easy to service and maintain. And tire clearance is also very ample. You can easily fit a 2.5 tire. This is a Trail Boss 2.4. So clearance is pretty good actually. For a British made bike, you expect it to be good when it comes to mud clearance. And we've got a big fat tire on the back. And uh, yeah, it's doing well. The geometry of the bike is a real highlight and gives us that awesome riding capability I showed you earlier. The company's long shot geometry has been applied to their bikes in the past, the Flare Max and the Rocket Max, and now the new Jet. So it's definitely on the long and slack side. With this size large, having a 64 and a half degree head angle and a 490 millimeter reach. We've also got long chain stays, quite a steep seat angle as well, and a long wheelbase. And a combination of those angles and measurements give the bike that awesome riding capability, but also good manners on the climbs and flatter trails where you're not going at warp speed. So a geometry that works for me. It's definitely on the long side, but at 5'11 or 180 centimeters, I could easily go to a size medium if I want a more compact reach. But if you like it long, this bike definitely works for me and it might work for you. It's not all good though. There are a few negatives to point out, I'm afraid. And the first one is the weight. Now, naturally, a steel frame will always be heavier than a carbon fiber or aluminum alternative. With this bike here, in a size large, weighing 33 pounds on my scales. So a bit heavier than I would like, and if weight is everything to you, this bike definitely won't appeal to you. But I can say that it rides better on the trails. It doesn't feel as heavy on the trail as it does on the scales. So don't let the weight put you off if you like the look of the frame because the weight isn't such an issue when you're actually riding a bike. The other bugbear is the water bottle placement. Now we've seen an interesting trend in mountain bike design in the last few years. Basically frames, suspension being designed around accommodating a water bottle and it being a key selling feature, which is strange because 10, 15 years ago, it was all about hydration packs and getting rid of water bottles. But now water bottles are back in fashion. So this frame, as you can see, does accommodate a 500 mil bottle using a side entry cage. And it does stay in place over quite rough terrain, so it doesn't eject uh, when you're riding down a rough trail. But it's not ideal, um, it doesn't look great, and that's a slight um, uh, negative on this bike, really. So if you don't use a water bottle, it's fine. Use a hydration pack, no problem at all. But if you do like to go packless, uh, then it's not perfect. You can have your Kotick jet in a number of ways. You can either buy the frame and build it yourself or choose for a number of level builds the company offers. This here is a gold XT option costing £4,649 because the frame is made here in the UK. Going forward, the frames are made in Taiwan and the bike will be £300 less. So we have a really solid reliable kit on this bike and it performed flawlessly in the time I've had the bike and there's nothing I would change. So a nice solid pair of hump wheels with WTB tires, uh, giving good grip in the slippering conditions at this time of year. Shimano's Dior XT group set, so 12 speed with hydraulic disc brakes. It'd be nice to have the four pot calipers rather than the single pot calipers we have here, but the brakes have been good. Uh, none of the bite point fade adjustment you get sometimes with Shimano brakes, they've been reliable. And then we have the Cane Creek helm fork on the front and a double barrel shock on the back and using their factory settings works extremely well and a nice alternative to the more common Fox and RockShox offerings. For finishing kit, we have an X-Fusion dropper post and remote lever, which work well for me. And then it's all Kotick branded parts. For the saddle, the handlebar, 
There's 35 mil stem and a lock on grips. And on the scales, this size large weighs 33 pounds. You even get a mud guard thrown in as well. So that's a nice detail. And like I said, there's nothing I changed on this bike. It all works really well. Now the question on steel is a really good one. And the company, as you probably know, have forged their identity, their reputation in steel frames going back 10, 15 years, how long they've been around, I forget, uh, been a while now. And they have justified the use of a steel frame. There's some good material on their website to read if you want to know why they use steel. And while they go against the flow of carbon fiber and aluminum in the industry, the two favored materials of full suspension bikes, steel does work well here. And although there is a weight penalty, although it's not as big as you might expect, there are other smaller uh, tangible benefits to material. With big tires and all that suspension travel, it's more difficult to detect that famous ride quality of a steel frame like you get on a road bike or a gravel bike. But it's definitely something to material compared to aluminium or carbon fibre, both of which are stiffer than steel frame. And I found it gives a sort of muted, uh, calmer ride quality. It seems to dissipate some of the vibrations a little bit more and gives a smoother ride. And it also seems to give a bit more traction capability in very tricky, slippery conditions in a way that other bikes might struggle. And I clean some sections where I struggle on other bikes as well. And it also seems to give a little bit of flex when you're loading into corners quite nicely as well. And sort of helps you go around corners in a way, which sounds a bit odd, I know, but it does seem to have a bit of flex just to help uh, get around a corner. And not too much, uh, just enough in a way that I found uh, really works my riding style and the way I want a bike to perform and handle in those sort of situations. Uh, not a razor sharp um, as an aluminium or carbon fire bike, but that hint of flex just seemed to give it a bit more um, a leeway in quite tricky situations. Now I'm quite a light rider and I imagine heavy riders might get the frame to flex more than I can. I didn't really experience any flex from the frame in any negative way at all only a positive attribute uh, for riding my local trails. But if you're a bigger rider, heavy rider, or a more powerful rider, you might get the frame flexing. But for me, uh, the oversized tube profiles from the Rocket Max uh, didn't give any flex uh, in any negative way, like I said earlier. So, all good. I don't want to labor too much on the use of steel in this frame. I know all of you watching will have your own opinion on this steel frame, but it's clear from a number of cottics I've seen on my local trails, and the number of bikes they're selling and their demand on social media and from speaking to them, that their bikes are selling in big numbers. So the steel frame aspect isn't pushing off lots and lots of people. It won't be for everybody, but it's clearly suitable for lots of people and lots of people aren't pushed off by the weight and other factors of a steel frame. It's a really interesting choice. Um, there's lots of reasons to buy steel over aluminium and carbon fiber. And while I didn't want this video to be about steel versus those other materials, I think it's a big talking point because it does define the bike, the way it rides, the way it looks, and it does stand out from all the other aluminium and carbon fiber bikes in this category. So in summary, the Kotic Jet is a huge barrel of fun, and it does live up to its name, a fantastic name, though not quite quick enough to keep up with my trail dog, Ali. But I think I probably need an e-bike to keep up with her. She's so, so quick. And for me, it does live up to the ethos of a trail bike really well. A bike that can ride everywhere, and do everything really well. And isn't compromised too much in any one aspect of riding, whether going up or going down. You've got enough travel for most situations as well. And it really is a sweet spot, the Goldilocks, dare I say it, between a company's shorter travel Flare Max and their bigger travel Rocket Max. And it's fantastic to look at. I love the color. I love the new updated graphics and the new head badge as well. Fantastic geometry as well, uh, long, slack, good equipment as well. Nothing to change on this bike uh, for my riding. The price may be a little bit higher than some rivals in this category, but a small British company versus a big global corporation. So that is a factor as well. I clearly have been talking too long because Ali's uh, disappeared to uh, forage for snacks or something, whatever dogs do when they're bored. So I just wrap up the review by saying, I'm really impressed by the new Jet from Kotic and I think it's a great addition to the range and I'd happily recommend it and I'd happily buy this bike. It does everything you want from a trail bike. It's fast, it's fun, it's highly capable. Yeah, a little bit heavy and some other issues around the water bottle cage, but there are more positives than negatives, I feel. 
and it's a great looking bike and I can almost keep up my trail dog Ali on his bike, but not quite, or almost. Uh, if you want to find out more about Cossack, check out the website linked down below. And if you enjoyed the review, then maybe consider subscribing to my channel by hitting that red button down below. And if you really enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, that'd be uh, much appreciated. And if you have any questions about the bike, well, put them down in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this bike. And if you're in the market for this bike or a bike like it. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. And um, I'm off for a ride to tire the dog out a bit more because she's still got loads of energy left. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. See you again soon.